Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to the show. Today, I'm super excited to dive into today's conversation with Bobby Barberich. Bobby has been a documentary, wedding, and family photographer for 12 years, winning dozens of awards for her irreverent take on traditions and seeing the magic in the mundane. Her podcast, The Tilt and Shift Photography Podcast, digs deep into the moment it clicks. When our perspective shifts and we can no longer continue on the same path, she guides listeners to use these stories to build a better, more confident business. And Bobby's coaching experience runs the gamut from luxury photographers with Katie Mary Education to wayward teens for the nonprofit adventure company Girl in the Wild. And she's based in Nelson, BC, which is like five hours Hello. away from me, which is pretty <laughs> damn cool. I am so excited to dive into today's conversation. Without further ado, welcome, Bobby. Bye, Lisa. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we've been laughing me. so hard already like we just met like five minutes ago so this is awesome we could have, we could have just met in the middle and just had coffee and done. right <laughs> meet you in summerland <laughs> right totally so tell us who you are and what you're really really passionate about well as you said in the intro i'm a documentary documentary wedding and family photographer and i am deeply passionate about the documentary Mm. element of that because I okay let's we're going to dive in deep immediately love it I <laughs> I like my life legacy is I want to leave this world having helped people to eradicate their self-loathing mm. yes <laughs> my tool is documentary photography because yeah. I believe that if I can show you your life unfiltered and help you see it in the beautiful way that I see you, that it can help to break down some of those walls that we have around ourselves and believing that we have to look a certain way, behave yeah. a certain way. And I mean, social media makes it a million times worse, but I believe that by, by putting real photos of real people doing real things, it can first another perspective or another way to look a way around yeah yeah i love that so much i think you know it's funny because it reminds me of when you said social media like i've been a photographer i think for 13 years now and it's been it's been an interesting road it was started when mm -hmm. i had my son the self-loathing like you hit the nail on the head with that and especially when it comes to looking at things on instagram and social media like I, we went through a renovation and it took about five years in our house and I oh, wow. didn't take any photos in my house of my son during that period because it didn't look like an Instagram perfect house. Oh, wow. And it kills me. Like there's a few that I've taken that are my most favorite pictures I've ever taken of all of the pictures I've ever taken when the mm -hmm. house was like torn apart and yeah. my son's in like a diaper with a life jacket on, like getting ready for a fishing trip with yeah. his dad. And I just like snapped it. Yeah. And I just like getting over that loathing of that because of perfection, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's real. Like we connect with things that are real. I think you yeah. get distracted by things that are not. And yeah. that's what kind of draws us to them because our lizard brains want us to be sort of like pacified and not thinking too hard. Yeah. You know, but when we, when we feel that away and look at how we're actually like what we actually value yeah. things that are truly meaningful to us, then, then it lets go, you know, mm -hmm. we can, we can shake it off and actually say like, this is what we look like. And, yeah. but not, not even so much what we look like. The thing about documentary is that you feel things when you look at it, like yeah. pretty pictures, we like to look at them, but we don't necessarily feel them, yeah. you know, cause they're kind of, they, they can be kind of one dimensional, right. Or we're admiring the beauty of something yeah and that's about it right yeah. whereas if something is like a complex composition and there are people with varying degrees of dishevelment or like yeah. emotion or reaction to something we get to feel all of that stuff that all those people are experiencing and it's not about what you look like yeah it's about what you're experiencing 
I love that. And, the, and the, you know, it's so fascinating too. Like it's like, we don't look the same ever. Like mm -hmm. I don't look the same as I did five years ago or 10 mm -hmm. years ago or 15 or 30 or 45 years ago. Like yeah. we're constantly evolving and changing. And so yeah. having that snapshot of how you felt at that moment is so powerful. Like yeah. it's not just about that dress that was trendy or like the Botox in your face. Like it's, I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. And, and by having those real photos taken like regularly, we get, we get more accustomed to those changes, yeah. you know, my brain still thinks it's 10 years ago. And then when I look <laughs> in a photo, I'm like, I'm, I'm 28. Like, oh, whoa. <laughs> but if I, if I was more accustomed and I am, I, this is, I mean, it's something that I'm working on as well. Right. Like we try to help other people's with other people with the things that we help ourselves with. Yeah. Um, I'm getting much more comfortable with this process of, yeah. of aging and the fact that I'm not like, I don't look the way I used to. And, and that's it. I shouldn't like, I, that's life. Like that's, yeah. Let's celebrate it rather than avoiding it. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. So tell me how you found yourself in love with photography and how you discovered your voice as a photographer and now as a photography coach. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a very long, <laughs> very circuitous route. So finding my voice was the hardest, mm. the absolute hardest thing for me to do. Um, and it's why I'm so deeply interested in the discomfort. Yeah. Between fire swamps that I went through and right. me being like, hey, this is how you do. <laughs> totally. The fire, the pit of despair. <laughs> We are the same. <laughs> oh my god, it is my favorite movie. Me too. Yeah. You're... I'm not a witch, oh I'm your wife. Like that's the line we say every night. I like my <laughs> my husband last night was like, he's like, go clean up the, <laughs> the kitchen, witch. And I'm like, I'm not a witch, I'm your wife. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, there's. I knew. Okay, so at one point in my life my oh my really uh, i had a very sweet boyfriend and he found the script to the princess <gasps> bride on the internet and he printed it out and gave it to me and i was like oh like i was so touched it was so thoughtful but i went through and corrected the script based oh. on memory yeah from what i knew of the movie yeah <laughs> oh my very, god you're like, like you guys got it wrong yeah, yeah <laughs> this is this is actually wrong. <laughs> thanks virgo yes <laughs> I am that, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I definitely say the movie. Um, uh, sorry, the fire swamps. Tension. <laughs> <laughs> back, back to the fire swamps. Oh, so um, good. I just think like help, like being able to help others, to be able to, um, like in my coaching, to be able to find that voice and like feel confident yeah. in it. I'm. Uh, my work is all centered around building confidence yep. because I believe confidence is a tool that we need to be able to do anything that we want. Yeah. Like we can ask people for advice. We can like ask people what to do, but unless you have the confidence to be able to take that information and distill it through your own life's experience and your skills and your gifts, um, none of it really matters. Like no. if we're always asking other people what to do, we're totally missing out on what we're actually capable of doing. Yeah. So completely. Yeah. I love that. And it, you know, it's funny. I had a conversation earlier this morning and it, we were talking about like permission that it's almost mm. like we're always asking for, for that permission that we're, it's okay for us to do something. Yeah. Right. And it's like, yeah. you don't like, you just need your yeah. own permission. You just yeah. need your own. Do you want to do that? Does that feel good? Does that feel right? Yeah. Does it align with you? Like, yeah. I mean, those are, but those are really, those can be extraordinarily difficult questions Yes, for people who were not um, in environments that fostered that. Completely, completely. Like some, some inner child work for sure. Yes. Um, whether it's by personality or by your environment or both, you know, yeah. if we're, if our personality is, is a little bit more, is softer or more exploratory and then you grow up in a, in an environment that it wants you to conform to something and be a certain way and have these expectations that's 
totally out of alignment mm -hmm. with your soul, you know, yeah. and it takes, it takes courage and exposure to figure out like one that like to have the self-awareness to even question that yeah and then to go around about seeking the answers you know yeah i think yeah. it, you know it's interesting because you hear a lot about inner child work but you rarely hear about like how do you even dive in to yeah. your inner child work so yeah. what advice do you have for someone who may be Ooh. hearing about it but doesn't even know where to start Mm, okay. Um, I learned about it through my therapist. Yeah. So I would first and foremost recommend like finding a therapist and asking yeah. them about it for sure. Um, there's a bunch of different, um, now there's different podcasts and different books. Totally. And I'm honestly like, kind of blanking on some of the ones that I've read. Um, but in terms of, of an easy way that I, an easy way, a, a simple but not easy way that I think about it now is there was there were a few uh, milestones in my life as a child where things went off the rails mm -hmm. and i can look at that as an adult yep. and be like yeah that was i i learned not to trust myself i learned that i my voice wasn't valuable i learned these various things so i like to go to that time in my life and give her what she needs mm -hmm. yeah. and i do it through visualization yeah in one way it's like um my my seven eight year old needed to be protected and so yeah. i protect her um, my 15 year old needed to be her yeah. mm -hmm. she wanted and and that's like that is that's more or less the basis of it there's a, yeah. a, a variety of modalities around how to do that for the for me, it's visualizing the place where mm -hmm. she needs to be and creating that for her and yeah. how I go about the world now. Oh, I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. So how did you find yourself in photography coaching? Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's been a, a natural evolution for sure. Um, I have, I worked prior, like prior to going, maybe, maybe this is in reference to the Securitas route that we didn't talk about <laughs> because we went into the fire swamp. But the... <laughs> <laughs> which is an excellent metaphor for exactly what we're talking about um so when i was a little kid i wanted to be a photographer i wanted to be a storyteller mm. like i kind of vacillated between writing and photography yeah um my my parents uh weren't they were worried that my life would be really hard if i was an artist mm. and so they discouraged me I'm doing that and the environment I lived in was one of my people have to believe yeah. self-awareness to yeah. Um and so I went into so I was like, okay, I can be a teacher. Like that was just sort of like the the thing, like if you if you can't write or be a photographer, you can maybe teach those things. Mm. Or like I could teach English or French. Like those were that's what I was talking about. Yeah. But I was also really struggling with an eating disorder at the time. Oh, and so yeah. then I was like, okay, well, I can be a dietitian. So I can help yeah. other people deep in the depths of despair in the eating disorder. But when you go through things, like I just, yeah. I have always had this inclination of like going through things and help, like wanting to yeah. help other people through the same thing. Um, but then I, when I was doing my master's in nutrition, I, went to night school to become a photographer. So it just, it just ended up coming back. Yeah. It kept, it kept dogging me. Yeah. And then I was working in academia for a while and then I'm like, nope, I'm yeah. done. And I moved to Nelson, uh, to be a photographer and I deliberately burnt everything down so I that I couldn't it. go back. Like, I, love it. I left the city. I like, I severed all ties yep. and so that I couldn't go back on myself. Wow. So like safety, right? Um, but then now that I've been doing this for, for tw I think I've been calling myself a photographer for about 10 years, but I've been doing it for probably 13 or 14. Um, I just, I see, uh, I see myself in other people and I see other people yeah. struggling with similar things and I'm like, I want to help. I, yeah. I, and I really believe in paying it forward. I yeah. think that we all, I deeply believe we go through things in order to yeah. share the load for someone else. Absolutely.
I love that. I love that. I think so many of us really, we struggle with our photography journey at times. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think you have to kind of go through it in order to learn the lessons from mm -hmm. it. And I think mm -hmm. that's like, that's the hard part is like, yeah. you don't even realize, like, you don't even realize it until you're through it. You're like, wow, I won't okay. be doing that one again. <laughs> like, that was bad. <laughs> I remember I yeah. I remember like probably one of my first years I I booked a like a family session on mm -hmm. Boxing Day. Oh, like, right? Well, why wouldn't you? You're not working that day. I was like, "What?" And, and that's then, when they need it, right? Yeah, but then I thought it was like a family of 4. Oh, okay. 26 oh, people showed up. Oh. Yeah. Didn't realize it was too <laughs> Didn't was have like that in the contract. Hard lesson. <laughs> didn't even have contracts then. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so it's like it's so funny like it's like all these lessons that you learn and you're just like okay like I have so many in the wardrobe of lessons yeah. that you know like when you when you collect them and you're just like I love that and I think that, like I've listened to your podcast and I um I just your coaching is phenomenal I know that you you're probably getting some amazing amazing Thank transformations you. for your clients and really really helping them so yeah that's, I think I it's super, just awesome super love it <laughs> So can we talk a little bit about maybe your perspective on when someone's just really feeling stuck and they're feeling mm. stuck where they're like either shooting things that they don't want to shoot or they're like just feeling stuck with how much money they're earning or just like just generally unhappy. Yeah. What would be your advice on like starting to extract yourself from the pit of despair? <laughs> the three threats of the fire swamp. Yes. <laughs> oh, you asked... <laughs> The lightning stand. <laughs> Please, everyone who's listening to this podcast, go Please. and watch Princess Bride. It is Please. the most brilliant movie. Yes. I think ever. 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 In all ways. Ever. We, like, it's my husband's favorite, too. Like, we love it. We love it. Yeah. We can't stop. <laughs> Invested by giant. That means you must be exceptionally strong. That's how That's how I feel. Like, that's I identify with the giant. But... <laughs> Anyone want a peanut? <laughs> No more rhymes now. I mean it. Is this going to get cut? I hope not oh because my. it's too this bride lovers. <laughs> Rejoice. <laughs> That's the subtitle of this Oh episode. my God. <laughs> boo, boo. <laughs> okay. Oh my so God. The question was how to help people when they feel stuck. Oh, I have another joke about Princess Bride, but I won't say it. Um, okay, so I super love this question because um, it's a deep one. So oftentimes people come, I feel stuck, they're looking for uh, like a hand or a life preserver yeah. or some sort of like, do this. Yeah. But what it really is, is helping them to be able to choose courage over fear. So mm -hmm. often we're stuck because we fear something. Yeah. And usually what we fear is change yeah. doing something differently we know that i mean the feeling of stuck is 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 a if you're feeling stuck it's because you are and it's because you're scared of changing more yeah. than likely i would say 90 mm. percent of the time that's what's happening so and we we often do things that we don't enjoy or don't align with us because of fear and whether that is fear that we won't be accepted or that yeah. our work won't be liked, um, or fear that we won't be able to pay the bills if we don't do what we see everybody else doing, who we assume are paying the bills. <laughs> um, and also, like, if we don't necessarily know where I where our alignment is, mm -hmm. so those those are all things that will keep us really stuck, yeah. or in in fear of change, and so. Um, how to how to change that is to it's to do something different which sounds so like placating right but that is the answer we have yeah. to do something different so whether that is um you change what you're shooting or, or you start saying no to the things that you don't really love so yeah. like let's say for the next three months i'm only going to shoot the things that i love uh -huh. let's just test this out any inquiry that comes to me if it's something that i don't super love i'm just going to say no for the next three yeah. months that will, of course, bring up fears of money yeah. or not having enough money. 
Um, so you would want to be in a position where you felt that you might be comfortable for the next three months. But the cool thing about money is that if you are clear about what you want and what you're putting out into the world, money comes. It does. It comes it really right does. back. You if just you magnetize fall, it. Mm -hmm. It really does. It truly does. And that's because we're following. I, I think it's because that we, we are following why we're here. Yeah. We are drawn to things for certain reasons. Yeah. And one of those reasons is because that's why you're here. Is yeah. you're supposed to put that out. And when you don't put it out because you're scared that you won't be accepted or that you won't pay bills or whatever those fears are. When you put that little fear on, not a little fear, when you put the fear on pause, yeah. the money will, it will come. And yeah. you will start, your brain is so beautiful. It starts finding ways for you to adjust your business so that you can make money doing the thing that you love to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I once, I can't even remember who originally said it, but it, for me, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. Yeah. You know, it's like, does it yeah. like, does it give that like, oh yeah, I want to do that. Or is yeah. it like, mm, no. Mm -hmm. And it's like a lot of the times if it like, I, I like to think of terms and things like if I, I have to do it or I get to do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And when you switch your thinking on, like, is it a have to, or is it a get to, it's like, Oh, like, how does that feel when you're like, okay, like I get to do this. Like, yeah, that's really good. Right. Doesn't that feel really, good? Really good? Like, yeah. And also like paying it, paying attention to how that feels. That's, this is something yeah. I do with my clients a lot is if they're stuck between two, between two options, like one, one is often more logical Yeah, and being like, well, this is what I should do. And Side note, if you're saying should, that's not what you should do. No. <laughs> like that, Quit that's shooting on no. yourself. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but is to envision yourself. And one of my therapists did this with, with me because I'm often, I get stuck in a situation. Yeah. And um, because of fear, because of scarcity, because of time. Yeah. Stuff. Um, envisioning yourself doing the two options. So being in the place, envisioning all of your senses, like what you're hearing, what you are, what you can smell, what you can feel, what you're wearing, like what, what you are experiencing in that scenario, pay attention to what's happening in your body is like, where is that kind of resonating? Where are you feeling it? Um, is there any sort of like, like, are you getting like any kind of like, is your breath feeling a little bit short? Is your heart racing? All right. Like what's happening in your body and then imagine yourself doing the other thing. Mm. And what does that feel like in your body? That's, that's the truth. Our bodies yeah. know the truth, right? Yeah. And if we can learn to listen to them, if we give ourselves pause long enough to like pay attention to how those emotions yeah. are being processed physically, then those are beautiful. Things yeah. What the answer is. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. One, one thing I, I do, like when I get really stuck on like making a decision is mm -hmm. I do the coin flip. And it's not the answer of like, what is the coin? It's like, how do I feel in the, it. it's like, how do I feel in the center? Like yeah. what, what's happening? Oh. Where am I leaning in the center? Like, am I hoping it's heads because of this? Or am I hoping it's tails because of this? Yeah. And then my answer is, it doesn't matter what, where it lands. It matters yeah. right here. Yeah. And then I know that that's what my heart wants. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I get it. Yeah. If you're disappointed that it lands on heads. Yeah. Like, you're like, well, oh, then it's obviously, then obviously that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. Well, that's a good one. That's a good yeah. quick way to do it. Right. It's just like, I it's just it. like that internal litmus of like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. I'm going to love do that it. one too. So when I was listening to your podcast, I learned about shoot shadowing and I yeah. loved this phrase when I heard it. So can you share with our listeners what it is and why it's so important to growth? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for asking this question because it's it's my take on on photo critique. Yeah. Yes. And so so shoot shadowing is it's it's a bit of it's it has a critique kind of element, but I think we kind of get a little bit scared by the word critique because I'm going to yeah. be criticized, and that's not what it is. It's a, this yeah. kind of supportive journey through one of your Lightroom catalogs. Yeah. Unculled, unedited, like just you kind of naked. I make a joke about granny underpants in yeah. one of my podcasts. I talk I about know. it. Um, <laughs> you're wearing like your ugliest underwear and we're going to go through your Lightroom catalog together. And what it does is it allows me to kind of get into your head. 
yeah. and I can see where you're positioning yourself, what you're thinking. I can even kind of feel, especially if someone's yeah. being hesitant, if yeah. someone is being, or if they're, try, if they're staying somewhere, maybe a little bit too long, or they're not, they're not quite where they need to be to first to really feel the moment, especially in documentary photography. It's yeah. where, how you immerse yourself in the environment is immediately evident in how you're able to tell the story in the movie, right? So if there's like distracting elements or if there's distance between you and something, or um, if you're, if you just take one frame instead of five, yeah. like when, when there's a movement. So it, it really allows me to like get in there with you and then seeing, and then we talk about, okay, how are you feeling? What were you thinking? So yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what the hell I was doing or like, oh, I saw this and I, really, I was really hoping something was right. Um, then we can talk about strategies of yeah. how to make this a more clear picture because we really get stuck in our heads and we really fall in love with our own images, right? Yeah. And we, when we're editing, we have context. We've given ourselves context because we were there. Yeah. But if you have to explain a photo to someone and why you like it, then that photo could have been a little bit better. It could yeah. be, we, we could have found a way to, to tell a more meaningful or more clear story. So when we go through your catalog together, it, it, I come in with this objective um, perspective. I don't know any of these people or what's going on, but I can see where the story is. Yeah. And then we can talk about, okay, here's how we could have gotten there or amazing. Look at what you did. Look what you pulled yeah. So it's being, having people objectively look at your work is, is so helpful mm -hmm. to help me become a better photographer and feeling, feeling really good about your work because yeah. yes, we have to love our work and it's super helpful if the work that we're putting out there is, is understood, you yeah. know, or if it, if it resonates and it's, it, it's, it sometimes doesn't resonate because we're standing in our own. Yes. You know, whether that's yeah. because of we, we um, getting into the right spot at the right time, yeah. anticipating things. Yeah. Like um, so yeah, it's just a, it's just a super supportive, inquisitive, curious way to look at how you move through a shoot and yeah. how we can help you to be more, um, to even be a better I love that. Yeah. Do you go through, like, do they pre-call at anything? Because I'd be no. so curious to know, like, the ones that they chose and the ones oh. that you choose, would they be similar and different and why? It's really right? fun because sometimes they're not. And, the, yeah. uh, like, a lot of times other people seeing your work is like, oh, what you, oh I didn't even see that. So, like, it's yeah. another, like, not only am I looking through your eyes, but you're, you get to look through mine as yeah. well. Like, I didn't even think about that. Or, like, what if we cropped it here and then the message is so much more concise or it's more, yeah. like, direct um yeah yeah i uh, uh, sorry what was the question um oh shoot shadowing fire swamps but, obviously <laughs> back to the fire swamp but yeah the 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 whole point of it is is to be able to have other eyes yeah. on what's going on and then that can help you to refine your your work yeah people who go to art school they go through tons of critiques, yes. right? And it and it kind of it, it's a skill you have to learn to be able to not take it mm -hmm. personally. I talk a lot on my podcast about not taking things yeah. personally, and one of the ways to do that is by having critiques. But it also develops confidence, right? Because yeah. you're like, oh, okay, this is something I can work on. This is something I'm doing really well. This is yeah. something that I can bring to my next shoot, and like I can have like dedicated practice on anticipating the moment or or composition or whatever. Totally. Like the biggest gains, I think when I was first learning, like this was back when like photography forums were all around. Yeah. And like, I remember I was on ILP or I, I love photography way back in the day yeah. and like just posting for that feedback, like just mm -hmm. getting like different eyes because when we post on social media, usually it's just like rainbows and like applause, yeah, clap. right? Like, yeah, like slow claps or her like hearts and like, totally. and that's it, which is great. And it feels wonderful. Everybody loves the likes, mm -hmm. but like there, it, when it comes to growth, it can mm -hmm. often actually be stagnating when yeah. you're only relying on the applause 
Yeah. Right. Totally. If that's your environment, it can be devastating. Yeah. If that is your purpose or if that's what you kind of learn as feedback, yeah, it, you get really yeah. stuck. And yeah. It feels really awful. When yeah. And your work doesn't seem to resonate. Yeah. Or, or you start to feel like those things are meaningless, you know? Or the algorithm changes and you don't get as many yeah. likes as you did in the beginning. Oh, good Lord. Right? I see mine right now. <laughs> I was like, I don't even post on social anymore. Forget <laughs> like... it. <laughs> well, it's funny because I, I am a posed newborn maternity fine art photographer and I love mm -hmm. like composites and like, um, mm -hmm. so it's interesting because when I think about my own work, I'm like, oh, I'm definitely putting it on a mask. Like oh. I hide, yeah, like I definitely hide behind the perfection and making things perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm like, interesting. Like I've mm -hmm. never really approach things with a curiosity observer mind versus yeah. a director mind yeah you know what i mean like yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm very like, blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. like this is what i want you to do turn your head just like do this yeah versus oh, wow. like a documentary approach yeah. right and i'm like well, yeah what that's one of the things just... yeah like what would happen if i shut up like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 like all hell would break loose <laughs> probably <laughs> it might be amazing the baby would um but yeah this is this is one of the things i say to my clients all the time when, when i meet them for their discovery call is like i am a documentarian i'm not a director yeah so if you if you want to be told what to do and you want to be posed and and that's wonderful i'm not your photographer yeah if you just want to naturally flow through your day and you want to feel all the feels than yeah. yours you know like they're they're totally different so different line, I love right it. yeah we should do a shoot together and see i know happens. right just see what happens <laughs> <laughs> like, lisa shut up <laughs> like, <laughs> just let them wait <laughs> bobby do something <laughs> right <laughs> you're not alone with that Boogers, boogers. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, and i love it you're like it's awesome <laughs> 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 So great. I love this conversation so much. <laughs> so I love this quote from your website. Bobby mm. is magical at understanding the true why on what is holding someone back. Now, can you share your approach to helping a photographer uncover this and how powerful it is? Yes, I I love this quote too. And that's why it's on there. I, it's so I, good. Coach, I coach for um, KT Mary Education and... So I mentioned, I mentioned earlier that I was a dietitian. I worked in eating disorders. And so I took a lot of training in different therapeutic modalities. I'm not a therapist. I'm not, a, I'm not a counselor, but I definitely have, I'm strongly informed by that training and that experience and those backgrounds. And so, um, it works really well yeah. as a photography coach because I, I really want to understand the deeper meaning behind what people are asking yeah. because the vast majority of the time we ask a question and that's not the actual answer that we want. Yeah. You know, like it's like, for instance, if someone is asking how to place their packages, yeah. they're not necessarily asking. Mm -mm. No, they're looking for help to understand their value yeah. um, and how to communicate that to them. Yeah. So we dig behind the question. And sometimes I don't know very much because it's just, Right, because it, it's like ripping off a bandaid on a like yeah. fresh wound. Yeah, you yeah. have to yeah. figure this out for myself. Yes, like, I have to think. Yes, I can't outsource my thinking. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So, if we um, like the answer to the question, if answering the question with like you should do this, like if I said you should charge this amount of money for this type of session, um, it's 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 not helpful, and that's what we yeah. want in the short term because that's that's truly the easiest thing but it doesn't, we don't learn anything. And then we're left continually asking yeah. that question. Yeah. Whereas if we find out what we're truly asking and we're able to intrinsically understand or be motivated by our own needs, um, then we're gonna grow and we're gonna mm -hmm. evolve and we're gonna understand our motivations and our, our, we're gonna be able to translate our values into our work and into our client experience. and that all comes out and that like it at the end of the day there's a number yeah. on that but when you've done all the work to get to that number 
that number makes perfect sense, you know, yeah. and there's, and you fully believe it and there's no doubt and there's no, like, there's no comparing yourself to other people and there's no, like, you're just sure. And then when people ask you, like, why are you so much more expensive than other people? You can be like, this is why. Yeah. And they're like, cool. Where do I sign up? Like, yeah. it really truly works like that. Yeah. So I love yes. that. I love that. The question behind the question, Lisa. Right? The question behind the question. I love that. I love that. Love that. So I think a major limiting belief for so many of our listeners and pretty much all photographers is if they raise their prices, they think mm -hmm. my clients won't pay that. So mm -hmm. what advice do you have from like working on that one? Because it is so common. It is pervasive. <laughs> right. Well, first of all, where does that come from? Like, yeah. why do we think like that? Yeah. Uh, and it's because we've never done anything differently yeah. or we're doing the same things as everybody else. So or that one a... person messaged you back and said you were too expensive. That one totally. person. One. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? yeah. Exactly. And so the way that we kind of move beyond that is my clients won't pay that is that you're right. You're right. Your clients won't pay that. So it's time for new clients. So are you going to continue pricing yourself in a way that you are broke? Or do you want to price yourself in a way that you can lead the life that you want to live? Yeah. And so this is what I work on with my clients. I'm like, what do you want your life to look like? Yeah. Let's price your work so that that can happen mm -hmm. rather than capitulating to what you, you might not even know. Yeah. Like you might just assume that you're you know, like you, you, you get a client who there's like, there's no way they can afford that either. Either they won't pay it or they can't afford it. Right. So the yeah. people who won't pay it are the ones who like don't value it. Yeah. And the people who can't afford it are the ones who would, if they could, yeah. right? so there are like their circumstances, in their life too. Yeah. but it's not what we're doing is we're assuming that that's what they want. And therefore, in order to get that work, I'm going to assume and there that this is the price that you need in order for you to hire me. So there's a mm -hmm. bit of like validation in there, like yeah. looking for other people to validate me through my pricing. Yeah. Um, but in my own experience and in, in some of my clients that I have had that thought about, like there's no way that they can afford this. They have been some of my clients. Yeah. So there are. I would say there are more people who can pay what I value as because those are my people, you know, yeah. they find a way and it, it is not up to me yeah. to decide what other people can afford. It's up Completely. to me to decide what my value is. Yeah. I was, I was chatting with someone earlier and they said, we often forget that almost everyone is carrying around like a $1,300 phone. Mm-hmm. People can afford stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Show me your right? phone. <laughs> right? <laughs> totally. It's just where we want right? to put our money. And if exactly. you can communicate that value, people are like, yeah, for sure yeah. I'm going to pay that. Yeah. You know, it's it, it really does stop with us and our, our uh, how um, effective we are at communicating our value and notice I yeah. didn't say selling ourselves no because people hate the word selling and I agree yeah. we are providing a service we are giving them something we are making something for them that they really really want and desire and value yeah. and so we have to communicate that in how we show up in our work and in our bonding and in yeah. how we communicate with them. yeah it's not just for them. It's fascinating to me and especially looking, looking back at my own path and like looking at my, um, motivations, I think around raising my prices or not raising my prices. Like mm -hmm. it was probably, I think it was probably around 2014, 2015 that I really realized that my identity was so like tied up in being the popular photographer, being the one that was mm. booked the most, the one that had the yeah. most clients at a yeah. detriment to me, like, because I was so overworked. Um, like I had 
like I was booked six months in advance, which like felt like such like a, oh, yay me. Right, but I was right. undercharging and I was oh, overworking yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was exhausted and I was miserable and I was over drinking because I just mm -hmm. couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was just this hot mess that I got into and it all came down. I didn't want to raise my prices because I wanted everyone to like me. Right? Like. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And where does that come from? Inner child stuff. Right? Like, <laughs> and I was like, if you raise, if I raise my prices, people won't like me anymore. And I, so I can't do that. So I just have to stay yeah. stuck and be yeah, miserable. Like I would right? stay stuck and have people not like me. Yeah. And that's, that's, that is one of the deepest fears that we have is, yeah. is the desire for, to be connected and to be part of, part of our group. Yeah. Uh, like part of, our, part of our tribe. Like when we were Neanderthal falls being separated meant death really yeah. like vulnerability and um a very hard life is scrounging up very <laughs> but if we but our, we don't live in that world anymore like no. now so and, and another way to look at that is the person who created fire was probably not hanging out with the group he was out messing around with stuff and or i shouldn't say he they <laughs> were out messing around with stuff trying to figure it out like yeah. it's got there's got to be a better way yeah and they found fire yeah. Right. So there is huge value in being different and standing out and your prices can be that because everyone yeah. is, is scrounging around in the, in the, in the mid range price range, mm -hmm. your price alone separates you from, yeah. from other people. And, and or it raises the value of our work in general yeah. when yeah. we truly put the correct numbers on what yeah. we're doing everybody can have a living wage yes. where they can and do it. Yeah. It's a one. Right. Just to like, just to survive. And like, yeah, it's just not, it's not the way to live and it's not sustainable and it doesn't feel good. And that's not why we're put on this planet is to just like yeah. be empty on a hamster wheel, you know, yeah. like yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. no more of that. Not for me. <laughs> Nope, no me either. <laughs> Sorry. So can we dive a little bit into procrastination? Because mm -hmm. I think, and from what I know about myself and what I know about our students, mm -hmm. it's something that we all really, really struggle a bit. So I'd love to ask any advice that you have to maybe stop self-sabotaging behavior like procrastination and get things done more quickly. Yeah. Or this all. is a tough one, right? Like... <laughs> Sometimes like, and procrastination is sometimes kind of celebrated. It gets kind of like a bit jokey and like we yeah. all sort of like rally around this. Oh, we're procrastinating and like making ourselves like super anxious. Yeah. <laughs> Why? That's not good. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I, I think that procrastination is, is really rooted in fear mm. actually. Um, and that fear, like, coming from that need to belong or, or, or like need to connect. So like if we procrastinate, we don't have to think about that thing that we have to do because if we do that thing, it kind of opens us up to that fear, you know? So yeah. if we procrastinate updating our brand or even having a, a cohesive brand, um, or if we are procrastinating finishing off that, that title or finishing off that session to send to our clients, like we are, we are setting ourselves up for that anxiety. And I, I honestly don't know. I don't know why. Like, yeah. I don't know like the evolutionary reason why we would choose to increase the anxiety. Right? Sometimes procrastination happens is because we're so stuck in the muck doing mm -hmm. more things. And so it really comes down to time management. I think it yeah. has a big play, like a, in, in practical terms. Procrastination comes from an inability to manage. Yeah. Well, or an unwillingness, whether it's an inability or the person to figure out, but a lack of awareness around where we spend our time, um, a lack of awareness of how procrastination actually amps up anxiety, mm -hmm. um, and a lack of awareness of where we are choosing to spend our time that is making our life a lot more challenging than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So one thing, one thing that people could do is um, if they're thinking about this more from like the philosophical mindset um, perspective is there's a really book, a really good book called the mountain is you. Oh, Brianna, Brianna Weist. Weist. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
so that that book is really excellent and she talks yeah. a lot about procrastination in there um but a more like hands-on approach for the more logical minds or mindsets um is to do like a schedule audit yeah you know so for like three or four days track how much time you do with different tasks and you might procrastinate and not do this <laughs> seriously <laughs> like i realized the conundrum i have <laughs> doing a schedule audit and it's painful <laughs> so painful, but it is so illuminating yeah when i did it i was like i am spending how much time scrolling like hours of my life are yeah. spent doing this with my thumb i was yeah. so like i wasn't i was embarrassed i was really sad that i was yeah. doing that. there are so many way more valuable things i could be doing yeah. with my time yeah. than than that or like even the the this idea of multitasking like that's there's no such thing our brain has to switch tracks yeah. between doing one thing and doing another thing and that switch is really inefficient in terms of yeah. energy and in terms of time so if your email is open while you're editing and you keep checking your email yeah like your brain is working twice as hard yeah. to be able to actually get the task done and the task is you finishing off finishing your editing right so yeah like blocking out your time yeah is like doing okay so the next two hours i'm doing this and this alone no distractions you'll be done in an hour and a half like yeah. it's incredible how much more effective it makes it makes your day and yeah. therefore gives you reasons not to procrastinate i love that yeah it's so true it's so true and like and it's it's almost like you know it's funny because i i need a schedule but i need it not to be so rigid yeah. that um i rub it like i'm a rebel because if you give yeah. me a rule, like I want to just like break the rule a little bit. So I need yeah. it to be like with enough freedom that I can just have like, I actually built in scroll time, I gave myself like yeah. 30 minutes yep. totally. where I can just like, just like play on TikTok and pretend yeah. I'm working. And I'm like, no, this is like permission just to do nothing right now. Yeah. And yeah, if, exactly. as long as I, I like build those into my days, I'm able to manage myself far more effectively than sure. like just trying to rebel and be like, I'm supposed to do this, but I'm going to do this. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Well, yeah, you're totally, you're totally right. Like that schedule, you would want it to include all of the things. Like you would right. want it to include your like total downtime or time you want to spend with your dogs or yeah. like, it's not, it's not just about work. Like if you, if you're able to figure out how do you kind of more, be less distracted when you're doing the actual work. You can make those distra distractions like more purposeful and not Yeah. You can really focus on because it's really about being purposeful about which thing you are mm. lending your focus to, you know? And yeah. definitely if there's much more scrolling in there, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it looks like. I love TikTok. It's, it's like my it's guilty it. pleasure. It is such my guilty pleasure. I love it so much. It's too <laughs> much for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's too, um, like, the act of everything moving as you're scrolling oh. is like, whoa, like, it just, yeah. it, it hurts my brain. Yeah, I so, think yeah, that, I, I think my brain got addicted to it. And mm -hmm. I'm like, blah, 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 like, I'm just like, okay, more, like, more. duh, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, like, I don't even really love reels for this. And I think that's the oh. reason is that I like things, I want to be able to digest things on my own time. Yes. And that's why I love photography so much. Ah, the, and which actually makes so much sense being a storyteller documentary, the photography, yeah. like, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Because right? like you just want to slow something. down and absorb, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I love that. I love it. Totally. All right. You ready for our lightning round? Ooh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> coffee or tea? Uh, decaf coffee. I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Favorite movie? <laughs> I think we did this. <laughs> Definitely The Princess Bride. I love it. <laughs> Go to karaoke jam. <laughs> I or, do the, actually... or the one you sing in the shower by yourself. <laughs> no, <laughs> I am like 100%. I have a karaoke jam and it is <gasps> Welcome to the Jam. Oh my god, so, GNR is my favorite. Like worse. GNR, it, like GNR is my favorite. I'm not joking. I like know the word to like every song and like even, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me I can too. play. Yep, yeah, November Rain. Big, I can play on the piano. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay, say that again. November Rain. I can play on yeah. the piano. <laughs> that was like my grade six party trick. Yeah. I would. I didn't know how to communicate with anybody, so I would just find a piano and play November Rain, and then dun, all of my. Dun. Like especially like the heavy part at the end. Yeah. yeah. Dun, 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 mm -hmm. dun, dun, dun. 
<laughs> my jam. Even like, you have the same like seriously, when I said to my, like when my son knows, like I'm upset about something, like I, yeah. mom's got GNR going on and like, I just need to like process with my GNR and I feel, yep. November which, rain. Which album was your phone? You like the, the Oh, Use the Your Illusions one, right? two. <laughs> two. two. Two was the yellow one, right? I think it was the blue one. The blue one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you know the song Breakthrough or Breakdown? Yes. Yes. That was, so in grade eight, we, did you ever have a declamation in school? No. It was, it was like this public speaking thing. You had to do an improv speech. You had to do a prepared speech and you had to recite a poem. Uh, I grew up in Alberta, so maybe it was an Alberta thing, but my poem in grade eight was <gasps> breakdown. Shut the front door. That is so funny. <laughs> Well, what I used to do was I liked to make home videos and I would, um, I figured out how to like, like I'd film videos on like the camcorder thing and oh, then I would wow. dub them with music and I would use like GNR and like make family, fa family films with Guns N' Roses music. We all come in <laughs> from the cold. And the funny thing <laughs> is at this, so this Thanksgiving, I went home and like my sister we made a video and we oh, called it, welcome to Thanksgiving. We got fun and games. <laughs> so yeah, I really yeah. like Guns N' Roses. Oh, wow. Hi. Hi. You're my new best friend. Yeah, I really <laughs> like it. I have a bit of problem with the, the misogyny now. Exactly. Me too. It's hard to digest some of that like, yeah. through your childhood filter, but yeah, yeah. I... Like I would, I, I, I used to have like strawberry it. blonde, long strawberry blonde hair and I would wear my bandana yes. and I would do my like yes. Axl Rose dance. I do that yes. in my karaoke. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. I yep. need some white um, bicycle shorts and like a plaid, oh. you know, remember he used to wear them yes. and then with like the plaid yes. shirt around his like, Yeah. Yeah. And I was like my sister, I like, I like, I want her to dress up a slash, like seriously. <laughs> this, well, this, this podcast has been such a tangent. <laughs> Welcome to the tangent show. <laughs> I love it. Okay, oceans or mountains, and why? Uh, mountains, hundred mm. percent. Um, lots of reasons. the The metaphor of mountain, like ev everything about like, yeah. getting to the mountain. I, um, the, I love the work. I love working really hard, yeah. and and then having big reward. Mm. And that, love it. That is mountain. Yeah, love it. What do you like to cook the most? If you like to cook, I don't. Don't yeah. do it. I like Don't it. Do it. <laughs> um, what are My three things said. you want to be remembered for? There is one thing that I want to be remembered for, and I, I we talked about it at the beginning, yeah. and that is like eradicating self loathing, hundred mm. percent. That's my jam. <laughs> Morning person or night owl? Morning. Nice. Yeah. Last thing you did for yourself as an indulgence. <sighs> Yeah, but that's kind of, I don't don't tend to do that, which is something that I like. Yeah, like just relaxing and like sinking into something. I did. I reached a milestone, though, know, in terms of pacing. So really, just like, um, sterile, that I nice. an intimate sellers. Oh yeah, and, yeah they're so nice. Right. Is so good. So I love it. Nice. I love it. We went there. We went there a few years ago. We were there in like 2017, I think. We went and mm -hmm. stayed. It was beautiful. Yeah. That's awesome. What's the best piece of business advice you've ever been given? Um, the best piece of business advice I'd ever been given is to start a tax account. Ooh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So every time I get paid 25%, I cannot touch it. Yeah. That goes. Because when you start making more money, <laughs> the government takes more. The government takes a little more than you were expecting, especially like when you do jumps between the, yeah. the tax brackets. Yeah. I really got dinged like yeah. two years ago. I was like, "What is this fresh hell?" That yeah. and I didn't, I didn't have the money. Yeah. Um, and that was I don't like that. I don't no. like that feeling of like it's terrible. Um, yeah, yeah. So start a tax account, twenty five percent. You, it's not yours. Yeah. Put it away. Yeah. Yeah. Where can our listeners learn more from you? Mm -hmm. um, well, I have my, we talked about my podcast a little bit. It's the Tilt and Shift Photography Business Podcast. Um, it's Tilt and Shift Podcast on Instagram. Um, but you can find it on my website, which is Bobby B. 
education.com b-o-b-b-i-b education.com and so all my all my coaching programs are on there and the links to my i love it well i love to end my interviews just with this last question and it is what are you currently curious about or artistically curious about it's a really really good question i've started i've started working with film again so in the very beginning of my career i shot my first wedding on film um i worked with film for a bit and then digital came in with like a groundswell and so i really abandoned it but i've always shot my personal stuff on film and but this year i'm including film with my uh with all my clients nice and it feels like all sorts of worlds have opened and so that's what i am like it feels like a, another portal in my brain has opened because awesome. i i like i'm i'm very skilled things feel very um sort of fluid and familiar pulling out my film camera and make being forced to because it's totally manual like i can't just shoot i have to like i have to be so deliberate in terms of how i'm experiencing the moment it is yeah. it's been it's really fun and it's been really inspiring as well because it's not perfect whatever yeah. perfect means yeah it's so different from digital that it's a completely new artistic process i love so, that I'm really love it yeah. are you developing them yourself too i'm going to develop my black and white yes awesome. so i found this in december i took a course uh where you can uh, learning how to develop film using um caffeine and vitamin c and a little bit of dish soap cool so you don't you know, it's really cool and and it's just it's this whole like you're doing it with your hands and it's this it's this kind of process but it's none of the push like you still use a fixer but yeah. you don't use any of the like push chemicals it's just like instinct she's like it's instinct cool um, and it's like you know all the like different leaves and stuff and it, it comes out and then for me and a little bit so so oh, beautiful you, I, yeah i love that awesome mm -hmm. well bobby thank you for joining me today this has been awesome this has been such a fun Thanks. conversation this has been a delight <laughs> i love it <laughs> thanks for having me <laughs> Oh, my beautiful friends. I hope you have loved this conversation just as much as I have. I am sending you so much of my light and my love today and every single day. We will see you next time. <laughs>